Another tool that we'll use uh, for managing our Windows 10 security is going to be the Windows Firewall. Now just like Windows Defender, we don't want this to be the only thing we're using. Uh, we do want to use a Windows Firewall, but we want other firewalls at other places on our network to provide overall network protection as well. So this is not a uh, solution to every firewalling issue. But it is a good, useful tool to have. And you don't, if at all possible, we don't want to turn it off because we want that protection in case something gets through our network-based firewall. So let's look at how we can manage it. So I'm here under Settings and Update and Security and then Windows Security. And here is my firewall and network protection. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to have a simple way to deal with a firewall, and then we call it Windows Firewall with Advanced Security for more detailed information. So here is our firewall and network protection. You see we have different no domain pro or different network profiles, the domain network, the private network, and the public network. And then this right here tells me that I'm currently on the private network profile. And currently the firewall is on. Now let me go ahead and click on that, and I've got a couple of options here. So I can turn off my firewall. Now I don't recommend doing this as a long-term solution, but if you need to turn off the firewall while you're troubleshooting an issue, that actually can be useful. Something's not working, I'm, trying, I'm having a network connectivity issue, let me turn off my firewall, see if that fixes the problem. Now if that does, I don't want to leave my firewall off. But now I know there's a firewall setting that I'm going to need to adjust. So I'm going to try to find that uh, firewall setting so that I can bring my firewall back up, but allow that particular application through the firewall. So this turns it off and then back on. And it's now paranoid because I turned its firewall off. I'm going to turn its firewall back on. That'll make it happy again. Okay. Now, so this is this on or off, all or nothing thing. The other all or nothing thing is this one right here. So a firewall will control data coming into your computer and data going out from your computer. And by default, Windows Firewall is going to allow some things going out, block most things coming in unless they're specifically allowed. What this does is this blocks all incoming connections. And again, this is going to be a temporary thing. This is not permanent, right? So I'm down at Starbucks. I'm probably going to be on a public network, not a private network, but I'm down at Starbucks and for some reason I, I just think, you know what, I'm on the network, I'm on the network, I'm surfing the internet, uh, or I'm working on a document, but I really don't want any access to my computer across this network. So I can come in here and say just block all incoming connections, including those that would otherwise be allowed. And that's just going to you know slam the door shut. So when we turn off Windows Defender, you know, it's get rid of all the locks on the doors, throw open the windows, knock down the walls, just let anybody come in. This is the exact opposite. Go complete lockdown. Okay, those are our two all or nothing options. And we can do that for any one of these three profiles. So I can say on my public network, I want to block all the incoming connections while still leaving incoming connections allowed on a private network that I trust a little bit better. All right, now, those are all or nothing. Most of the time, we don't want all or nothing. Most of the time, we're going to want specific things, and that's here, allow an app through the firewall. So let me bring this up, and this is going to show a bunch of apps that are already allowed through my firewall. And so you'll see the list of apps here, and a bunch of these are going to be Microsoft apps. But there are some of them that are not going to be Microsoft apps, like I have Packet Tracer installed on my system. And so Packet Tracer created a rule for the firewall, and it said, hey, go ahead and allow this. And I didn't do that. Right When I installed the software, the software did that for me. So that actually makes this easier to work with. But if for some reason I decide that there's an app that I don't want access to after all, then I can come in here and I can change that. So we'll do that by going to Change Settings. And let's look at this one right here, Paint 3D. So Paint 3D is currently allowed for both the private and the public network. Now if I want to change which networks it's allowed on, I can just 
click that and uncheck or check those boxes. If I want to turn it off entirely, I check the box over here. Pretty straightforward. If I don't see the app in here that I want, so let's say I'm having a problem with a particular application connecting through my network, I've proven that because I turned off the firewall and it worked fine, turned the firewall back on, it stopped working. Okay, so that told me where the problem was. So now what I can do is I can come in and add another app. So I allow my other app, I browse to wherever it is, blah, 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 I find my app, I'm already in Packet Tracer, we'll go to click that just for the fun of it. So I'm going to Packet Tracer, and then I'm going to choose Network Types, Public or Private Network. And then, I'll go ahead and cancel that because I don't need it, that will add that executable to this particular firewall rules to allow them out either public or private networks. So this is the easy way to manage it. This is not the detailed way. This it does it based on application, not on specific port number. Now if we want it on specific port number, and I want more detailed settings, that's where I go to my advanced settings. So I'm going to click my advanced settings, and here is my Windows firewall with advanced security. Now, over here I've got different types of rules, inbound rules, outbound rules, connection security rules. Here's my little overview and specific actions I can take. So for each of these profiles, the Windows Defender Firewall is on, inbound connections do not match rule are blocked, outbound connections do not match rule are allowed. Now obviously I can change these however I want as well by going to Windows Defender Firewall Properties. And so then for, let me go to my public profile, and for my public profile, I can say firewall state is on, inbound connections blocked by default, outbound connections, I'm going to block outbound connections. Now obviously I don't want to actually do that, but if I did want to you know, completely block any access to this uh, in or out of this computer, well, I'm on that public network, that would be a way to do it. This is going to block my outbound connections, so nothing originating on my computer going out will work. And then on my inbound connections, I can block default, block all connections, or allow all connections. Allow all connections, no security, block all connections. At this point, I would go into complete isolation mode. Let me go ahead and apply that, because I'm not on this network anyway. And we'll see right here, Windows Defender Firewall is on and we are blocking everything. So if I ever switch my network profile to public, it's my firewall goes into complete lockdown. So let me go to doo -doo -doo -doo, get my right profile here again to reset that. Okay. So those are very, very similar to some of the things we were looking at when we were looking at the basic setup. View and create firewall rules. All right, let's take a look at our inbound and outbound rules. Inbound rules impact traffic coming in. Outbound rules impact traffic going out. Let's start with inbound rules. Here are all of my inbound rules. Let me go ahead and maximize this. Give us a little more real estate here. So let's take a look at this packet tracer executable. What profile we're looking at is enabled. What action does it take? Block or allow. What program does it entail? What's the local address? What's the remote address? And then as we scroll over, what protocol? What port number? What remote port, local and remote port number? Are there any authorized users or computers? Or, well, as you can tell, these can get fairly detailed. Maybe the best way to look at this is going to be to go ahead and create a new rule. So I'm going to come over here and click new, new rule. And I can do this based on a particular program, a particular port number, a predefined rule, or a custom rule. Let me start with a port number. Let's say I want to allow port 25 for SMTP connections in. Only be relevant if I'm running a mail server. I'm not, but we're not going to save the rule anyway. So let's click on, we're going to do a port rule, and we're going to go next. All right, is this going to be a TCP or a UDP port? As you can tell right away, in order to do this, you need to know which port numbers you're working with, what protocols you're working with. So this, for a mail server, is going to be TCP port 25. So I'm going to specify port 25. I really don't want to specify all local ports. That's opening things up way too much. And notice I can set up more than one port here. You see there are examples separated by commas or a dash for a range. I'm going to do port 25. And then 
I have three options here. I can allow the connection, allow only if it's secure, so these are IPsec connections, or I can block the connection. Now, blocking connections is kind of weird. Normally, you don't need to block connections. You just don't allow it. If it's not allowed, it's blocked. But sometimes you'll have another rule somewhere that's allowing something, uh, and this particular type of traffic is part of what's being allowed, but you really don't want this. In that case, you might need to use a block rule. But your better option is to only create rules for the data that you want allowed and just let everything else be automatically blocked. So I'm going to allow this because I'm going to be running a local mail server. And then what uh, profile do these apply to? Domain, private, public. And I'm only going to run this when I'm on a domain network and click Next. And then I'm going to set the name and the description for the rule and click Finish and that'll create the rule for me. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I don't want to actually do that. Let's open up another rule here so that we can look at once we get it created, this is going to be all the details for it. So this is a rule for packet tracer. So we got the name of it, the description, whether it's enabled or not, what it does, it allows the connection. We can look at the programs and services that are allowed to use this. And then any remote computers. Are there only specific computers that we want? Are we going to make exceptions? So by default, it's going to allow anything. But I can say, you know what, only allow these specific computers or skip this rule for these specific computers. So I want Packet Tracer to work with everybody except, and then I can specify my specific exceptions. You can also identify specific uh, protocols and ports. So what if I don't want Packet Tracer to use all ports? Well, I can specify specific ports that it would be allowed to use. Obviously, I'd have to modify the rule, but um, you see here where we can set it. Um, we can set the scope, so local IP addresses, remote IP addresses that we're going to be connecting to. So I can say only allow Packet Tracer to connect to specific remote IP addresses rather than any of them. And then the profiles, the interface types, local principles, are there specific users that are allowed to do this or not, or are there remote users that are allowed to use this rule or not. So you can see we can actually get very, very precise in our Windows Firewall rules, which is great because it gives us this screen with the Windows Firewall with advanced security, which gives us very, very detailed rules. By the way, outbound rules work basically the same way as inbound rules, except that outbound rules filter traffic as it's leaving your computer. Inbound rules filter traffic as it's coming into your computer. So these are probably, the inbound rules are probably going to be your little more important ones. But one of the nice things with Windows Defender Firewall is that it does give you the ability to be very, very detailed here if you're doing advanced security. But using your basic options, it still allows you to kind of customize your network protection, your firewall protection a little bit without being so overwhelming that somebody who's not comfortable with networking and firewalls is going to be overwhelmed and not do it.